Hey everybody, this is Troy with eBuzz Central. Today we're going to go over the five myths about Linux that you shouldn't believe. Basically covering a few things that I have had pop up in my comments from viewers that state when they watch some of my videos that I'm lying to people just to get them to switch to Linux. And I would never do that. And if you're a common viewer of my channel and you watch a lot of my videos, you know I don't do that. But before we get started, please do me a favor. Please like, subscribe, or follow my channel. It doesn't cost anything. And if you end up not liking me, you can always unsubscribe. If you like the channel and enjoy the videos that we are producing, you can support us by becoming a member to the channel, buying us a cup of coffee, or better yet, becoming a patron to the channel over on Patreon. Those links will be in the description below. The first myth I want to cover is that Linux is very difficult to use. I completely disagree with this. If you are presently a Windows user, this is what you see. Everything's right here. You've got your app menu here. You've got different things that you can pin down here on the bottom. Now, what I'm going to use as a comparison today, let me switch over to my Linux distro here, which is Manjaro GNOME, the most recent release. And as you can see, out of the box, it gives you a similar desktop. you got a similar area down here that you can get to all your applications, your file manager, your web browser. You even get a little welcome screen right here. And it gives you places that you can get information or go to their wiki and get questions answered. You can support. There's your forums. Get involved. Get involved with the development. I'll go ahead and close out of this. But you have pretty much the same layout that you're seeing on Windows. Now, things are a little different when you open this up to look at your applications. You can see that you've got your applications here. And then, of course, you can go to a different desktop if you want. You've got two to choose from up here. So that's just a little bit different there. But you're getting the same functionality. Now, let's go back over to Windows. And you can see here you've got your apps here. You actually have to go over an extra step to see all of your apps. But the general layout is the same. So the difficult part, I think highly disagree with. It's kind of like the comparison between if you've ever switched from iPhone to Android or Android to iPhone. Yes, they operate kind of the same way. The layouts are a little different. It takes some getting used to, but it's not difficult at all. Myth number two. Let me switch back over to my Linux desktop. And this one right here is the one that scares the people the most, I do believe. If you come down here, you see the terminal. And myth number two is that you have to use the terminal and you need to know the commands to use Linux. No, you don't. Over 80%, 90% of the operating systems that I cover, you don't ever have to go into terminal if you do not want to. Now, I recommend once you get to using Linux and you start getting more comfortable with Linux that you can go in and use the command line. It makes a lot of things easier. But that's for somebody like me who enjoys using the command line. But if you want to get on Linux and you don't want to ever have to deal with the terminal, you don't have to. There are advantages to using the terminal. Heck, you can run the whole Linux operating system straight out of the terminal if you would choose to. But you don't have to. That's the key. So if you're wanting to make that change to Linux and you're like, I don't want to have to use the command line, so that's the reason I'm not going, and everybody says I need to use it or I have to use it, I, I just can't make that jump. You don't have to use it, guys. You really don't. If you want to, after you've run Linux for a while, you want to learn more, and I do recommend that you learn how to use the command line. It would definitely make a few things quicker in the future, but if you don't want to ever touch it, you don't even ever have to open it if you don't want to. So remember that, okay? Back over to the Windows desktop. Now, the third myth we're going to cover is that Linux does not have enough applications. It's true that Windows has far more applications available than Linux does. But there are plenty of applications for Linux. There are thousands upon thousands of applications for Linux that let you be quite productive, let you get busy out of the box. Now, I do want to cover this. If you're using Windows because you're trapped into the Adobe products and you do most of your editing and stuff through those, probably recommend you stay with Windows because there's not something Adobe-like. There are options out there that you could look at, whether it be the GIMPs, the Critters, things like that, the Caden Lives. If you wanted to give those a test drive and see if those could handle what you're doing, then by all means, you could switch to Linux and get those open source applications for free. But when you just look at what you have here on Windows, you have a few things in Windows that you can get from the store, obviously. But one thing that irritates me about their store, let me see if it's still there, GIMP. They have an image editor here called GIMP, Image Editor Pro, for 7 and then 789. This is an open source project, guys. 
This is free. You can go download it right now. If you go over here and you just open up and you go over here and type in GIMP, it'll bring up their website. You can go to right here and you can download it for free. It's an open source project. I don't like the oversight that Windows has on their store because there's people out there taking things that are absolutely free, changing the name of the developer, and then trying to sell it and make money. And there's more than one, guys. So you got to be careful there. And then, of course, if there are applications you want to get on Windows, you do have to go online and download certain applications. Now let me go over to the Linux desktop. Now back over to Manjaro GNOME. If you open up their applications, we want to go ahead and do a search real quick for software. And there's add and remove software. You go over here. Now this will open up a store of sorts. No, it doesn't have all the fancy looks that the Windows one does or anything like that. But you can go over here. You can go to preferences. And you can go to third party. You can enable your AUR support. And then go ahead and close out of that. But you can go over here and look through categories, photo and video. It'll show you things that you've already have downloaded. Or you can go up and do a search. If you're looking for something like GIMP, you can do a search for GIMP. And it'll bring up GIMP right there. Or you can get it from the official repository. Just depends. Okay. And then you can download it for free and have it right here on your Linux system. There are literally thousands of applications you can get. Okay. And it's not that hard. So for somebody to tell you there's not enough applications on Linux, it's definitely a myth. There are a lot of applications out there, a lot of powerful applications. As a matter of fact, out of the box with Manjaro GNOME, you actually get only Office Suite, which is a free alternative to Microsoft Office. And it gives you as much power as you want, whether you want to do documents, whether you want to do spreadsheets or presentations. And it's completely free and open source. You don't have to pay a monthly subscription fee to use it like you do with Microsoft. So it's totally free and it is Microsoft compatible. So if you're doing things back and forth between somebody that's on a Windows machine, you can get going with no problem at all. Okay. Now, not every Linux distribution is going to come with only Office out of the box, but you can go over to their software center, look up only Office or LibreOffice, download it, and you have it. It's free, open source. You don't have to pay for it. So that's the third myth. Myth number four, Linux is not for gamers. This one actually holds water a little bit. If you're somebody that plays a lot of multiplayer online games in Windows or those triple A titles that require anti-cheat or something like that. At present, yeah, Windows has got an advantage. But let's go back over to my Linux desktop. If you're a casual gamer and somebody that just wants to play maybe some older games that are from the Wii or the Super NES, or even at this point in time on Steam, there are 3,000 Linux games available. And in addition to that, there are some companies that are bringing popular PC games to Linux. You know, the Mad Maxes, the Laura Crofts, Hitmans, etc. Those are premium games. They may not be available the same times those titles are available for Windows, but they eventually do come out. And there are websites and stores where you can download Linux both free and premium games. And if you wanted to look at it into it a little bit more, there are actually arcade games you can play in the Linux command line. So, if you're interested in it that much, you can zip on over and take a look at that. And my fifth myth, Linux is for servers, not regular desktop users. There is no denying it. 500 of the world's top supercomputers run Linux. 90% of the web runs on Linux. 80% of the world's top websites run on Linux. But at the same time, it makes a great desktop environment, guys. All you have to do is give it a try. All these myths that Linux is too hard, you gotta know command line, if you're a gamer, you can't use it. Whatever these myths that you hear out here with all these people that get paid to drop these little articles online to tell you how hard Linux is, to stay away from it, or whatever. At the end of the day, it makes an excellent desktop. It makes it an excellent alternative to Windows. And if you would just give it a chance, I think a lot of you would love it. But maybe you disagree with me. Are there other myths out there that you hear that I didn't cover in this video? Or if there's anything in this video you disagree with me about, please let me know in the comments below. 
Do me a favor before you leave today. Please like, subscribe, or follow my channel. It doesn't cost anything, and if you end up not liking me, you can always unsubscribe. If you like the channel and enjoy the content we are producing, you can support us by becoming a member to the channel, buying us a cup of coffee, or better yet, becoming a patron to the channel over on Patreon. Those links will be in the description below. Thank you for watching my video, and I will see you in the next video.